Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 124. When will we stop counting? Never! You'll have to pry it from our cold, dead hands. I was recently talking to a friend that was on live, uh, Megan Lemons, the one that we've mentioned that like the whole psychic thing that they try to pretend to be her. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, oh my gosh. Okay, Jesse, it's so good that you're doing the podcast because we were talking about like not giving a shit in your 30s. And I was like, well, that hasn't really happened to me yet. I still care. Not quite as much as I did like three years ago, but enough. And she was like, no, you'll see, especially with the podcast, like when you're like 32, 33 and doing the podcast, like it's going to be so much better. And I was like, that's in three years. Well, I mean, that's where I am and I I still care, but I do care less. Well, she said it happens different for everyone, but kind of you just over time are just like, okay, I don't have the energy for this anymore. However, that just seemed like such a wild concept to me. I'm like, I mean, I don't have any plans to stop, but that is wild that we'd still be doing the, the two old hags on the internet. I feel like we would just do it out of like not wanting to find another job. <laughs> I like to do different things, but this is the first time that I've ever just done one thing and just like only that. I think it's because it's not the same every time. So it doesn't feel like that repetitive. Yeah. And honestly, as far as not giving a shit what people think, I just find myself reading less comments. No offense. No offense to y'all. But it's a lot. We've been getting a lot of interesting takes that are just like, kind of just like, I I can't go there with you, ma'am. I'm sorry, but I I have no energy. (laughs) I think it would be different if they were just like hate comments. But it's like ones that I'm like, that's not what stop but yeah no full transparency I read pretty much like the first day it's like either I keep up with reading them so it's only like a few new ones at a time but as soon as it's gone like long enough that there's like dozens I'm like I I panic and I can't look and to be completely transparent we've always talked about like constructive criticism and how we're okay with that and there are times where we kind of knew that we were gonna get criticism on something before we even post it so when it happens we're just like god damn it I told you like you know what I mean like that kind of vibe but there is a lot of times where we get kind of inundated with these like opinions that are telling us what our like core beliefs are and like oh my gosh this is what you really think of these people and I'm like no that's not what I think of them because I didn't say that which is should we throw out an example oh I don't know I'm scared go ahead from when we talked about the JC Caitlin search history if you didn't watch JC Caitlin got exposed on his stream from like months ago that he had been looking up his friends, I want to put an emphasis on that, his friends and his fiance's friends, people that they knew. Best friends and roommates, allegedly. Yeah, looking up their OnlyFans leaks. Somehow that resulted in people commenting, saying that like we were shaming him for looking at porn and that like that's what we really think of sex workers. And I I think the specific take was you supposedly support sex workers, but as soon as someone consumes it, you have an issue with that. And we're like, yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah, if it's their friends. Well, and the thing is, too, is like you can support sex workers and also have a conversation on how the porn industry as a whole has been very damaging in many ways. Correct. To both the sex workers and the consumers. So it's like we can have these nuanced conversations without you insinuating that we don't support sex workers when literally everything we've ever said is that we support sex workers. It's a consenting adult doing whatever the fuck they want with their body. Who cares? Exactly. And also, like, I'm not here to say what anyone should do in their relationship. But, like, there are definitely some people out there that probably would prefer if their significant other didn't look at porn. That doesn't mean that no one else can't, like, not everyone's in a relationship. (laughs) And some people are okay if the person in the relationship consumes that content. So I'm confused how us thinking that he shouldn't go look up also, not pay for it, just look up the leaks, which I mean, he shouldn't pay for it either, obviously. (laughs) But one of them was his fiance's roommate. That is insane. Yeah, it's just overstepping a boundary that we even made clear. We're like, well, we don't know what their boundaries are, but it's clear in his apology that he overstepped one. I mean, I get it. I think that it's tough. We have conversations every week on so many different things and we're two like very opinionated people. We generally try to give respect where it's due. And if we seem to be a little like, quote unquote mean, it's always when we're having like fun. Like we're just like, oh my God, look at this. And we're laughing at it. And people are like, wow, you guys are so fucking mean. We're like, oh, we were just joking. Like we weren't like actually trying to be mean to this person. So I think that's going to happen and has happened more and more as we've gained an audience and, you know, people tune in every week. It is what it is. We're giving our opinions. We're very opinionated. But that being said, that's been hard. Like I can't 
subject myself to that constantly, which sucks because there are so many of you guys who are hilarious, who are just like insightful, who like to give, you know, interesting perspectives, but it is a lot to consume everyone's opinion every week, twice a week. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, and that's why I like looking early on because I feel like those are the people that are more like dedicated to the podcast. And that's not to say like, we only want an echo chamber of good no. comments, but I think the people that would leave constructive criticism would be the people maybe that watch right when it's up, not like the ones that trickle in a couple weeks later that they like have no idea who we are and they're just taking things at surface level. But that being said, I do just want to say, can I be a bitch? Absolutely, I can be a bitch. I'm not here to be like, what, me? I can be a bitch sometimes for sure. I, I try to be funny about things, but... I recognize, like, I think, who was I talking to my mom about it? I was just like, damn, I can be a little judgy sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's a character flaw. I think a human one. I think a lot of people are more judgy than they'd like to admit. We all judge. But I never want to be malicious. So if I ever find, like, if I read comments that are like, whoa, you guys, like, went way out of line, like, seriously being malicious to this person who didn't deserve it, I do always take it into consideration of, like, did I do that? Sometimes we'll go back and watch and we'll be like, oh, shit, you know, I don't know if maybe that joke was just a little bit not, like, it didn't land. Things like that. Like, we're not saying we're just like la 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 can't hear you but like it's just been a lot like there's just been so many a lot, a lot of criticism in the chat well and i think also we try to at least for me like i feel like most of my things that might come off is like that was a little harsh or judgy regardless but i feel like generally i try and aim it at like the situation not at the person and we always say like impact versus intention we understand that like sometimes yeah. things have different results than you intended on but I think that's the biggest thing is we're never trying to be malicious. We might be trying to be funny and something might come off a little like, okay, reel it in. Yeah. So anyway, that was like not supposed to be part of our intro. Holy shit. No. Do we ever plan the intros though? I mean, No, we, we don't. But that one God. was like extra long. Yeah, but either way that we've had that on our chest for like two months. Basically, now, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate constructive criticism. But yeah, just generally, um, the comments we do read, we just have to be selective for our mental health. But anyway, um, anyway. Uh, okay, we have a show, I guess. I don't know. Lily kept like half of this for me and I'm so confused. Uh, there's a reason. Um, we'll do that later. Uh, let's oh start God. off with what we call, is it called Donut Gate? I think we could call this Donut Gate. It's been a while since we've had a gate. I know. I love a good gate. You guys, a few of you tagged us in this and I was like, oh God, what's going on with the donuts? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Business owners these days need to, I was going to get, get off together. social media, but this is this happened off social media and then it got brought to social media. Okay, so there's a vegan market in Long Island called Cindy Snacks and they source their stuff. Like they have people from different businesses all bring things. So one of those places that supplies to Cindy Snacks market is called the Savory Fig, which <laughs> interesting. Actually, have you ever had a fig? Of course. Is that like a common thing that people eat? Do you not? You've never had a fig? Well, so I have, but it was like a weird circumstance. No, my husband loves figs. I actually don't. Oh, well, I guess there's like fig mutants. <laughs> I used to love those when I was little. Girl, that does not count. No, yeah, my husband loves them and my daughter does too. So whenever they're in season, we're constantly buying them. I actually don't think I've ever eaten like a like an actual fig. But when we went to um, Palm Springs for a beauty trip and shoot one time, I guess in the Palm Desert area, they have like figs are a big thing and they do um, okay. fig shakes. I, I remember it tasted really good. I don't really remember what it tasted like, but I liked it. Anyway, anyway, back to the savory fig. So um, they are a bakery that supplies to this market. And apparently um, the person in charge of Cindy Snacks, I believe his name is John. It's not Cindy? <laughs> Apparently what the not. fuck? I, I get no. <laughs> Apparently, John was a little concerned because this was one of the donuts that he received from the Zimmery Fig. Jesse, do you have any opinions on why he might be concerned? Okay. <laughs> yes. It looks... No, it doesn't look like... It is a Dunkin' Donut, okay? It Allegedly. has... It's like a vanilla... <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if we need to say that. It's got like purple icing on it. But the dead giveaway, you might be thinking, especially if you're listening and not watching, like how the fuck would you know just by looking at a donut that is from Dunkin' Donuts. Because aside from practically just writing the logo on the donut, that's not what happened, but they basically did because they put a bunch of D sprinkles. So there's orange Ds and pink Ds, which are notoriously the colors of Dunkin' Donuts logo. So they basically put their little signature on here. And this supplier that is regularly supplying vegan gluten-free yeah, snacks- that's the key here. Just gave them a Dunkin' Donut. Just said, hey, here, have this bitch. And didn't say, anything. Upon seeing this, John, again, was very concerned because as Jesse said, vegan and gluten-free. So people are expecting that the baked goods that they are purchasing are going to be gluten-free 
and vegan. Some people might be just vegan by like choice or gluten-free by choice, but um, some people are like very allergic and it could be like a serious health hazard. Absolutely. I mean, celiac disease, it's just, there's so exactly. many instances where this could have gone really wrong. John texts Michelle and says, hey, I no way mean to insult you or question your products, but this donut was in a box with the strawberry frosted. These are definitely little D sprinkles, ones Dunkin' Donuts uses, even the same colors as the Dunkin' logo. If these are Dunkin' Donuts, the ingredients could kill somebody, as we have so many people with severe dairy allergies that shop here. I'm concerned with the donuts this week and I'm nervous to put them out. I will keep this conversation between us, but please tell me the truth. I don't want to kill anybody with a severe allergy. I feel like that's very gracious when it is so obvious so. that it is a Dunkin' yeah. Donut. But Michelle says, these are definitely not Dunkin' Donuts. If you don't want to put them out, don't. But they are not Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> what a weird response that is. Like, no explanation. Not like, hey, this is why there's D's on there. This is why it may look different. Just like, no, nope, but if you don't trust it, like, don't do it. Say Dunkin' Donuts one more time, Michelle. <laughs> then he says, I don't mean to insult you, and I hope I didn't, but you have to understand the concern. Could you show me the sprinkle container you have that had the D's? I just don't understand why that would be something you would have or put on one donut. <laughs> Which, that's uh, odd to me. I'm like, it wasn't a box of these donuts. Why would you include just one? Mm -hmm. Like, did she just like not have enough of the other ones? So she was like, no one will know. <laughs> she responds and says, I could send you the picture later. I made a bunch of donuts for someone's birthday. That's a weird excuse too. Maybe their name was Daniel. Yeah, that. And then John says again, okay, I'm really not trying to insult you and I really don't believe you would do that. I'm just really off put by these sprinkles as I've seen these at Dunkin' before. And then Michelle says, I would never do that. Mind you, she's sending these with like exclamation points. Like, yes. it's just such a weird way of communicating. Then John says, I don't think you would. It was just a weird thing to see. And I felt it was my responsibility as a business owner to ask. I appreciate you being willing to calm my nerves by sharing a picture of them. It's very clear John is still like, bitch, these are from Duncan. <laughs> she then says, I can't right now, I'm not home. If you don't want to put them out, I get it. But I would never do that. I feel like she really just like folded fast. She was like, oh, well, if you don't want to put them out, you don't have to, it's fine. <laughs> well, that's literally the first thing she said, which is like, I didn't say that, I'm just inquiring. Then he says, the day is over now, so no worries. If you can buy tomorrow before we open, that would make me feel a lot better about this. Thanks, Michelle. Side note, who serves donuts the next day? They're disgusting by then. I thought that was odd too. Yeah. When this one probably is like a week old at this point. <laughs> but then Michelle just says, okay. The next morning at 9.08, she sends a screenshot of not the actual sprinkles, no. not like a container of sprinkles. It's an Amazon screenshot that shows happy birthday sprinkles that have like a ton of different letters in it and they're all different colors. Yeah, but they don't, even in the picture that she shares, which very obviously was just her being like, letter sprinkles, you know? Apparently it's like the first one that pops up. Yeah, but even then she didn't do a very good job because that does not look like the sprinkles. Get ready. Michelle then says, along with the picture, Hi, John. I'm still out in Montauk visiting my boyfriend. I won't be back till this afternoon. These are the sprinkles that I bought for the kid's birthday party. John says, Thank you for the picture, but this doesn't quell my fears. Do you happen to have a picture of the custom order? I'm sorry for asking, but I'm not seeing orange or pink D's in that container. I'm very concerned. Like, are you kidding, ma'am? You couldn't even lie better. So that was the last uh, text that John has shared, but- That's not where it stopped. No, no. It wouldn't be a gate if that's where it stopped. Of course not. Because then John, or I guess, I don't know who does this, but someone that works for Cindy Snacks, perhaps it's Cindy, decides they're going to buy the sprinkles mm -hmm. and show that they look nothing like the D's on the donut because those D's are from Duncan, allegedly. Well, yeah, but the sprinkles are like way bigger too when you see the picture of them being compared. Yeah, it's like they're bigger, they're not the right color. They're, there's a lot of problems there. Then, again, judging by the nails, I'm gonna guess maybe this is Cindy. They decide that they're going to prove that Michelle is a fucking liar and they're going to do a celiac test on this fucking donut. <laughs> So they chop it up into little tiny pieces and they put it in a little testing kit. And would you look at that? Apparently it is positive for gluten. I've been pregnant before. That's definitely a positive. What this proves is regardless of whether it's from Duncan, which allegedly it definitely is. <laughs> Regardless, Michelle's a fucking liar. <laughs> and it's not just like, oh, you're you're not being truthful with me. You have to like think of what she is lying about because it is so fucking insane to lie about something that could hurt someone or kill someone. That is just another level. Yeah, like you had the opportunity to have an out and you doubled down when you know it could kill someone. What do you mean? And it was only one donut, right? Yeah, well, 
I mean, this was the one that was obviously from Duncan. I don't know about the rest right, of Right, that's true. Because uh, I'm like, if it was only one, maybe it got stuck in there by accident or whatever the fucking case may be, but just own up to it. Be like, oh my God, that was my fucking breakfast and it, <laughs> it wound up in there. My bad. <laughs> Classic mix-up. <laughs> I mean, it's better than like completely fabricating where you got the sprinkles from that you made them for a party. Like that's fucking like, crazy. Legion, the sequel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, to Jesse's point, like this isn't like lying that it's a homemade one versus a store-bought one. Like, it's lying about whether it or not it could possibly kill someone. You know what I saw on TikTok when I saw videos about this? There was a lot of comments coming for Cindy Snacks and saying that as business owners, they were regularly buying goods that were supposed to be allergen-free, like sight unseen type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to source materials by like, you know, especially if you're going to a bakery or buying from a bakery, you're supposed to look through everything before you purchase it. It's kind of like, you know how chef from a restaurant like they even look through all the microgreens that they garnish things with they look at it from the seller and then they say okay i will take that if the seller comes with like microgreens that are all wilted they're not going to buy that you know what i mean so like it seems like he did that after the yeah fact. but like what are they going to do they can't do a test on every single not one. a test but like this had d's on it you know what i mean like this was very visually oh, well no obvious. but i i mean i think that this was a first time offense like i don't think that it was i think so too and happened. i do think that this was someone they regularly bought from and maybe they just trusted the seller enough that they didn't feel like they needed to like check on the spot and they could just bring it. So that's when Cindy Snacks uh, takes it to Instagram and posts all the pictures that we've shown you of like the test, of the donut, of the text conversation. And it's accompanied with a very long caption that says, on February 23rd, the owner of Savory Fig dropped off the baked goods we ordered from her, including her donuts. In the middle of the boxes was the donut picture in the first slide. I, John, immediately became concerned as to why this one donut was decorated differently than all the others and in such a strikingly similar way to a recognizable chain. I pulled all of the items delivered out of our racks immediately and stored them in the back until I could confirm what was or wasn't happening here. As seen in the screenshots on slide two, I raised my concerns respectfully, hoping a simple explanation with confirming evidence would clear this up. We, Cindy and I, were not given satisfactory answers nor evidence, and in that moment we knew deep down how bad this was. Still trying to hold out hope that our trusted fellow vegan small business wasn't doing something so horrific, we scoured the internet for possible sprinkle dupes that would make it make sense. We even ordered the sprinkles she claimed were the ones she used. As you can see in slide three, not only are these sprinkles not labeled vegan or even list the ingredients on the Amazon listing, they do not even match the ones on the donut. We then ordered an at-home gluten test trusted and used by gluten-sensitive and allergic individuals. The test results seen in slide four proved to us that at the very least this donut, and most likely all of her donuts, contain substantial amounts of gluten. We can only assume, given this recognizable logo design, where these donuts really came from and what other ingredients they might contain. We have cut all personal and business ties with this person effective immediately. We are mortified that we provided any of her products to our customers and our own family. We trusted a well-known, highly recommended vegan and gluten-free baker who was claimed to be working as a pastry chef for over 15 years. There is a certain mutual trust and respect the vegan community, especially small businesses, have amongst ourselves. We might all live differently, but we all have the same deep core values that consuming animal products is morally, ethically, and ecologically wrong. We are enraged that this trust and respect was broken and that we were unknowingly put in a position to perpetuate that betrayal. We want all of our customers and community to know we take this betrayal extremely seriously and are looking into legal action. We will update with any proceedings as they come. Most importantly, we want to apologize from the depths of our soul to anyone who unknowingly consumed these products. This is our nightmare come true and none of you deserve this level of disgusting perjury. John really dialed it up after he was being <laughs> nice to begin with. Honestly, I just don't know where Michelle thought this was gonna go. Like it would go one of two ways. Either he would believe you, let's say, and you got away with it in the moment, but then you had that liability of someone consuming an allergen they absolutely cannot have. And I know that a lot of people think like, oh, you know, if you're just like vegan and you consume dairy, you're not gonna die. But there are people with legitimate dairy allergies, with legitimate gluten allergies, who have celiac disease, who have many, many different intolerances. And I'm not saying that that should be valued over just someone choosing to be vegan. It's all bad. If someone thinks they're getting one thing and it's another and it's deceptive, it's wrong. But why would she want to take that on? I just, I guess I don't understand where she was going with that or what she was thinking. I'd have to say maybe she's just like stupid and ignorant and thinks that like people aren't really allergic to gluten and like didn't think it was a big deal. But also there's dairy in there. So like, but that is such a wild thing to think when you are a vegan chef. <laughs> 
That's like actually It's wild to, to try and pass off a Dunkin' Donut. Like not even a donut that just like perhaps was a generic looking one. Like the D's, really? This is the one you tried to pass off and you really right. doubled down the on D's. it? The Like yeah. tri- quadrupled down, honestly. What honestly scares me about this is that her level of just like not giving a fuck and just putting out a donut that's very obviously from Dunkin' Donuts, allegedly, for sure. That indicates to me that she's done this before and she felt so comfortable doing it And maybe she does bake X amount of donuts. And then like, if she doesn't have enough, she just throws in from Dunkin' or wherever the fuck else. But that is pretty fucking insane. This is something I would expect from like my uncle at a barbecue when I was vegan and he just didn't give a shit that I was vegan. And he was like, well, just eat this, who cares? Like that's something I would expect for him to lie to me and be like, oh no, no, this is vegan, yeah, eat it. Not a fucking vegan chef that is known in her community. I saw comments on the TikTok that I saw that were like, oh my God, I know Cindy from Savory Fig. This is insane. Like how she's so nice. She's so passionate about what she does. Like Michelle. Oh, not, yeah, not Michelle, not Cindy. Not me slandering Cindy's name. From Michelle, like people know and have knowledge of her in her community. Why would she do this? Like it's actually fucking insane. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I was looking up the uh, Dunkin' menu to see if there's like pictures of that kind of donut. I mean, it's clearly from Dunkin' Donuts, but it's even more ridiculous if that's like one of their like main like. No, it's not one of their main, you know. So the thing that throws me off about it is the purple icing. I don't know if that's just the picture because I get Dunkin' Donuts a lot, but When I get like strawberry frosted, for instance, which is the only thing I could think that that is. Unless, no, sometimes they color their vanilla frosting, I think. I don't know. I'm trying to think because I'm like, I've never seen purple frosting at Dunkin', but obviously that could be. John said that it was with strawberry ones, so. Like I've gotten strawberry a million times there and it's never been purple. But purple is not usually the color that you would pick for strawberry. Has the savory fig responded? Not that I'm aware of, but let's check. Because from what I heard, they went private on Instagram. Oh my God. Okay, I just found a Reddit thread that has um, (laughs) more research and we were saying like, maybe this is the first time she's done it. And it was just like, I have no idea what the explanation would be. But apparently someone found that this is a picture of donuts that she sold to Cindy Snacks during the holidays and they're donuts with pink frosting, white, red, and green sprinkles. And then someone has a screenshot of Dunkin' Donuts and it looks like pretty much identical to the ones that she sold to Cindy Snacks. Okay, and also there's another link to ones that she sold for uh, Valentine's Day and then the same one. I mean, that's a little harder yeah, to Yeah, like heart-shaped donuts the same co- is kind yeah. of not. Heart-shaped donuts with chocolate frosting is not as identifiable, but I mean, it does seem like maybe it's a pattern, so I would Due to her that. history of being like yeah. Duncan's number one customer, I- I'm suspicious. The thing is, I know that vegan food has come a long way, And I know that there's so many substitutes and believe me, I made them all. I was vegan for five years of my life. I've made them all. I tried everything. There are certain things you cannot replicate quite like, you know, animal products, right? I think the number one thing I've found is eggs. And yes, I've tried just egg and I've baked with just egg. egg It doesn't do the same thing that animal products will do. So my question is, I'm like, they didn't notice that those weren't vegan. Well, I mean, are you talking like just looks wise or taste wise? Taste wise. Well, so I mean, if Cindy Snacks like didn't like taste test every single one that they got. Not every single one, but like you're not going to have regularly, like you're not going to regularly try your product. Again, I don't think it's their fault. This person's a liar. Michelle's a liar. But I just think there was something that slipped through the cracks. And again, they recognize they trusted her blindly or whatever. But it's like, really? Like Dunkin' Donuts you thought was vegan? Well, and that's you would think that someone like a customer would have spoken up sooner even if it didn't like make them sick if they were just like "Mm, i don't think that this is vegan but also do you feel like maybe and this is not trying to i'm not coming for vegans i'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence but do you think maybe they're like being like blissfully ignorant that they're like oh my god look how far vegan stuff has come and they're just like choosing to maybe (laughs) not believe it maybe and i've tried so many really delicious vegan things but the reason why i'm saying that is because donuts have Butter, milk, and eggs. Those are yeah, three things. Butter, the same, like, easily to make vegan. Like Miyoko's butter, incredible. There's so many good vegan alternatives. But milk is a big one. Milk, there is nothing. Like when you bake with whole milk, it is a difference in everything. Like seriously. So if you're trying to cook with a substitute milk, you can, but it's going to be different. And then eggs. Like, I don't know. I just feel like there's a difference and it's going to be delicious in its own way. But 
It's not going to be a Dunkin' Donut. Like, I don't know how they didn't Well, and not that. even like a homemade donut, like a Dunkin' Donut. Like a Dunkin' Donut. Like the ultimate processed yeah, shit Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like stuff from on. like chains tastes different than stuff that yeah. is not from, yeah, I don't know. Oh, it says also that she is deleting all photos of those donuts that we just showed you, the Valentine's Day ones and the holiday ones. Oh, is she? She's deleting those <laughs> from her social media accounts. So that's why it's all third party photos now that we oh my are goodness. looking at. And I did hear she went private. So she's probably freaking the fuck out. Which which is not necessarily the way to go if you're innocent, I will say. But well, I mean, clearly she's not innocent, though. Like, I, that's the thing. It's like it makes me very concerned for people that can lie like this and choose to lie like this, because what does it take for them to stop? Like, yeah. how far do you take the lie? Like, I can't fathom d doing this to begin with, but also then lying about uh, it. Sorry, I, you know, I'm into baking now, so I'm looking at the vegan recipes and they just do not put eggs. Like they don't use an egg substitute. They just don't put an egg. So I'm like, oh my God, that's such a big fucking difference. So it's just going to be a completely different Yeah, like I would think it would be maybe more dense, a little bit like just more different, which is fine. That's fucking fine. But again, I'm just like, how did they get bamboozled for so Like, I don't know. Again, this could have been the first time she tried it with this business. It could have been. But clearly, I think what's more concerning to me is Cindy Snacks aside, she's gone away with this for a long time. Well, and someone I'm scrolling through the Reddit thread and someone it was like, how much were they upcharging the Dunkin' Donuts? I'm dying to know what kind of a profit made this blatant negligence worthwhile to try. And then someone responded like seven to eight dollars a donut or something. Stop it. Someone says apparently they're baking facility is across from a Dunkin'. I really hope on top of not being gluten-free or vegan, these are not dumpster donuts. Stop it. Stop it right now. So the ones that John not was looking to sell donuts. were actually like three weeks old. The Christmas ones that we saw though, because I know I just said this might be the first time that happened to Cindy Snacks. The Christmas ones were from Cindy Snacks, right? The Christmas Dunkin'. And, and, the, and the Valentine's Day one. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So. Well, maybe, maybe, but yes, they were. And that makes sense because here... John was saying there was one with D sprinkles in the middle and he immediately took them out. But yet he apologized to everyone who's ever consumed one. So I think he knows that they've sold these for a long time and not noticed. Or maybe they're just like assuming now, like if she's going to lie about this, like it clearly probably wasn't the first time. But yeah, yeah. I, he doesn't acknowledge the, the specific instances where it's clear that she was doing something shady. How horrifying. It's just so frustrating too, because there's so many different reasons people restrict their diets. You just expect that the bare minimum that you're going to get what you pay for. And you hear it all the time. Still, it's happening now. I literally just heard a story of a woman who was eating at a restaurant and asked like four different times, hey, this doesn't have an allergen, right? This doesn't have an allergen. Nope. They went back to talk to the chef. They came back. No, she died. Like, it's fucking insane. Well, and honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to people being like really ignorant and just like thinking people are being annoying for like saying they have a restriction. My sister used to do that. She would be like, it can't have this on it because I'm allergic. She wasn't really allergic. She just didn't want that on it. And that makes it more serious. That's what they think everyone's doing. But like people do have allergies. Yeah, maybe because people do do that. It's kind of just like minimalized how people take it seriously. But people do die because of these things. It's fucking yeah. really serious. And that woman I just talked about had an EpiPen, administered it, still died. Like that can happen. And people just think like oh, allergic reaction. Who gives a shit? They're very serious. I get that that's annoying that people do lie about it. But like, why would you risk being liable for that? I don't know if they would be personally liable, but if it's on your conscience alone. Well, that's what I was going to say is if you're thinking about it, like a waiter maybe feels like I don't get paid enough to do yeah. this shit, bitch. Like I don't get paid enough to care. But it's all important, though. Like if you care about fellow human beings, I know it may be annoying to you, but you got to make sure and check that they don't have that in it. Because I have heard of people who cannot be in the same room as you when you open a bag of peanuts. Yeah, like, yeah. They will go into especially, anaphylactic Especially, I think, shock. are really, really strong. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, this is so unacceptable. And honestly, regardless of any due diligence on Sydney's snacks part that like they needed to do, I do think that they have a case. Like if they sue, I mean, Absolutely. who am I? I don't fucking know. But I, I think like just a deceptive marketing alone and allergens specifically, knowing that you could have put people in danger, like they should absolutely proceed legally because that's fucking insane. Um, there's a comment that says, I'm almost willing to wait to hear the other side of the story first because it's hard to believe someone could be that stupid to think they could get away with this and have gotten away with this for four years, according to Savory Figs established date. There's a chance there's more to this story. Like what? Honestly, no, I get that perspective because I know she went private, but like part of me feels that too. I do think she lied, but I'm just like, how did this, like, I need to know how this started. How did you get away with this? Because it is that fucking far-fetched. Yeah. It is not you, like, selling other people's work as your own. Like, someone else makes vegan snacks and you sell those. No. 
You are literally selling Dunkin' Donuts. She's not even private. The Instagram is gone. But yeah, so I don't believe that Savory Fig has responded aside from deleting their Instagram completely. Yeah, what the fuck are they going to say? Like, they literally cannot say shit. But I would be intrigued to uh, sit down with Michelle and uh, just know what the fuck was she thinking? Like, seriously, the dumbest move ever. The D sprinkles? Girl, get a grip. She got away with That's Christmas and got thing. way like, too cocky. The holiday ones is egregious too, but like D's? In the color of the Dunkin' Donuts? Are you kidding? Super frustrating. And hopefully um, she gets all her business licenses and shit terminated. Never fucking work again in this industry. You are wildly irresponsible and nobody can trust you. And as far as Cindy Stacks goes, I do hope that it kind of uh, opened their eyes to like not trusting their vendors as much and like doing their due diligence with every batch that comes in. Because I think that that's going to be yeah, an issue with I sympathize consumers, with them because I like just trusting them. What is the due diligence? Regularly like looking, inspecting, trying it yourself. Maybe if they just take one donut from every batch or order that they get and test it or like whatever the fuck. Like, I don't know. You're selling something to people that you're not making, you know? So like either start making it yourself and then you sell it or do your due diligence in making sure that that product is what it is. Cause like, I get it. They trusted her and she advertises herself. But like, I'm saying from now on, I'm not saying they should have always done this. Yeah. I'm saying from now on, I would never trust another soul again. I will be like, no, I need to test every batch. Or maybe how, you know, like, like with secret shoppers, they like don't tell them when they're coming and stuff. Like if it was like, hey, every once in a while, we are going to test these. So like make sure that they're actually gluten free. Yeah, it's kind of like a drug test, exactly. like a yes. randomized Just bring one. It on yeah, they could do something like that. Yeah, maybe they don't have to do every order, but like something. They do have to like be a little bit more uh, on the lookout because if I got lied to like this, I, yeah, I'd have trust issues. There is on their Facebook page, this like menu that they posted and it says their pricing on it. This is the Savory Figs pricing. So so half a dozen donuts is $35. Six. Yeah, that's six donuts. And then a dozen donuts is $65. That is fucking insane. Now, listen, if I am buying that from someone who is hand making vegan, gluten free, delicious treats, I get it. If you are selling me Dunkin Donuts for that price, I'll see you in hell. I will fucking see you in hell, bitch. I will literally make it my life's mission to get revenge on you. I will plot a whole villain arc. I swear to God. You better count your days, Savory Fig. That is criminal. I mean, I have to assume some of them are like stuff she baked and that she like supplements it at best with uh Oh my Duncan. God, look at the price of a dozen cinnamon rolls. Those better be fucking homemade. A dozen is $80? $85. Nah, bro, that is disgusting. Like I have never met a cinnamon roll that's worth that. I mean, $45 fuck. for half a dozen cinnamon rolls. Get the fuck out of here. I've made cinnamon rolls before. It's not that hard. And I've made vegan ones at that. I was going to say, so, I mean, yeah. I do love the Pillsbury ones. You know, that was one of my hyperfixations for a while. But um, vegan, I would understand if it was a bit of an elevated price, but $85 is absurd. I mean, and listen, again, if it's your time, and I've said it before, like everyone's time is worth money. I'm not saying you bake all day and you don't deserve to be compensated for it. But we're talking about... This would be like if the mug girl was selling Target mugs for $125. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, something like that. Or it's just a matter of like, usually these types of things like donuts are not made in one batch for a customer. You're usually making more and then you sell them at the half dozen or dozen. So if it's a cake that you're sitting there and you're dedicating all your time to this one cake, then I understand you charging for that. It's my time is for you only. But like, if you're doing a bunch of fucking donuts... Bitch, do not play with me. And maybe if it was like those, you know, those gourmet donuts, I think people went viral on TikTok for them and everything. They have like creme brulee on top, like sugar, like they're With literally like five dishes art in one. Yeah, literally. And they're basically little cakes. Then I understand. But we're talking, everything I've seen of this lady, I mean, are Dunkin' Donuts. But then besides that, are just frosted donuts. That's the that crazy is part. Not, is like, no not art, no nothing. Them from a place where it's like, donuts are pretty like trendy these days. They have a lot mm -hmm, of cute mm -hmm. donuts at places. Yeah. They're not even from a cute donut place. They're from Dunkin'. Which like, I'm not shitting yeah. at Dunkin'. But like, that's the one you're going to pick and upsell that. Yeah. It's just very lazy. And it's clear she got a little too lazy and um, slipped up. But yeah, wow, that is insane. I... Can't imagine how much money they were paying her. I'd be so pissed yeah, too. Yeah, like less trips to Montauk to visit your boyfriend, Michelle. More time baking. But anyway, that's pretty much, I mean, how much more can we say about donuts? Yeah, it's no, fucked. I think that's it. You we know? haven't seen a response other than the fact that she deleted her Instagram. The Facebook is still up. If you want to go check it out, don't leave her hate. We don't encourage any harassment, but no. like it is entertaining to look at. Lots of great visuals. Well, more importantly, I want to know what the fuck you've been hiding from me for the next topic. What is it? And why couldn't I know about it before now? Because you wouldn't let me do it. 
Stop it. Guess what? What is it? Guess, Lily? Guess who guess who it's about? Ariel, the influencer girl that is so annoying. No, I couldn't put myself through that. Thank God. Uh, someone that I wouldn't let you cover. Unless it's like a banned person from our blacklist, then I don't know. It might be two people. Two people. <gasps> Lily. Is it the Island Boys? <laughs> You absolute witch. Technically, though, it's only about one of the island boys. Are they making out again with each other? Close. That wasn't the story I was going to focus on, though. So one of them, Fly Soldier in particular. Mm -hmm. Every time I think of them, their weens are literally engraved in my head. I'm not even joking. Like flashes. It's like their weens and then them making out. I'm like, oh, please make it stop hopefully it's about something different that i can replace that visual yeah no no it's nothing we have to actually uh we don't have to blur or censor anything (laughs) thank god it's not gonna make you throw up but it is a little disturbing so i don't know anything about what they do or like how they afford anything they do besides the fact that they like yeah why are they so rich i don't know it's very confusing to me and like how anyone watches them unironically i don't even know if they do music anymore they live stream a lot i know that and i know they do cameo as well but i don't know who's paying for the cameos i know that fly i think is the one what's his real fucking name um he has a girlfriend that i see all the time on my for you page so i was gonna say i don't know (laughs) yeah okay so i was gonna say i don't know anything about their personal lives or like what they do but something came up on my for you page that piqued my interest because of what i saw in particular with the girlfriend but it's Because them aside, it seems like this is like a thing now. I've seen several instances of... Of girlfriends getting their boyfriends tattooed on their I knew you were going to go with that because, uh, boy, have I seen this. I originally was going to have this be like kind of an overarching topic and then pull the other examples. But then I started to try and pull the examples and I like didn't want to dive into those rabbit holes because apparently they are rabbit holes. Are you talking about like the Najam family? Yes. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, because people are like, oh, this whole thing is fake. But then she has the baby mama's tattoos. Yeah, or and then the I didn't. I looked her, it up like, and people no. said that some of it's fake. And I was like, OK, I don't have the energy for that right now. One day because I've been eyeballing that one for a while. And then Krishan in uh, Blueface. Okay, that one is so fucking, I am so over them. And why is it always the most hideous tattoos? I do have to say, Kayla's is the best one. At least this tattoo is somewhat, quote unquote, artistic because it's the profile of Fly Soldier. Like it's his profile on her. But I will say it's also a well done tattoo. Like all of these, like the Najam family, those are hideous, horrendous angles. Um, Krishan's blue face looks weird. Like this is the only face tattoo that actually looks well done. That being said, fucking insane to get I was like say, call I me will crazy, die but any face before I get Nassim's face, face tattoo. tattoo on me. Not for me. This one, I would say the only benefit to is that it's very much on the side of her face and she can cover it because she has a lot of hair. Yeah, I, listen, I've seen some cute face tattoos. A face face tattoo, I specified. Uh, yeah, a face face tattoo. Uh, I would never get anyone's face tattooed no, on me. Never. Like if someone that I love dearly passes away or a pet or anything like that. There's other ways to commemorate their existence. Exactly. I wouldn't get a portrait, I don't think. I think I would uh, do something different. Or maybe just don't get it on your fucking face. I don't know. At the same time, it's like, it's her body. What, if, what do I care well, about? Well, you know that's what I mean? the thing, though. That's what we're going to dive into. So first, people were like, that's not real. There's no way. And then he posted this. I'm going to say it's not a temporary tattoo. Is this permanent or temporary? Permanent. Permanent. No, yeah. It's permanent, right? We don't do temporary. We don't do temporary. So apparently, it's real. Then he has posted countless TikToks. We're only going to watch some of them where he's basically like bragging about like, look, his girl got his Mm. face tattooed on her. Yucky. And so this one says, only alphas can get their girl to tattoo your face on theirs. And it's him trying to pull her hair back. So she shows it and she refuses. It's a shame because she seems really young. Mm -hmm. And what I will say is that everything I've ever seen from both of their lives being leaked because they both go live a lot. They'll fight like they'll literally join each other's lives to fight each other. It's pretty intense and they have a horrible relationship. I think that's pretty safe to say. There's a lot of fighting, a lot of toxicity. She is constantly um, accusing him of cheating on her and it's just a really, really nasty, tumultuous relationship. So that's what makes this icky. If it was, you know, a couple that's in love, I could think the tattoo is hideous and just be like, well, you know, slay away queen. Who cares? Like, uh, it's not for me. In these videos that we're going to keep watching, like she doesn't seem happy with it. It seems like she was convinced to do it and I'm just confused on why anyone is with either of them to begin with. I remember the day that she got it, people were posting a bunch of videos of her crying. 
Yeah. Because yeah. they got in a fight. That's here. I'll fast forward to someone asking if he would get her tattooed. Oh, of course he wouldn't. And if she thinks he would, she's completely delusional. Well, he, he flat out says he wouldn't. Here we go. They think I should tat your face on me now. That's not happening. I got no more space, to be honest with you. What do you mean? You got all the back of your legs, your butt. I think it looks good on the face, though. Good job. Show it. It's Hot. so disturbing yes. to me. Like, he's so dismissive. Like, I don't think everyone needs to get their faces tattooed on each other. But, like, the way he's like, no. Can I bring up something maybe unrelated, but also related because I'm staring at it? What is that fucking white line he's doing? Have you ever seen those barber videos where they draw that line on the hairline to make it look more crispy? What the fuck? He draws that on every day. What do you have a white eyeliner pen? Is that a Sharpie? Someone said like that chalk hairline you have or something. What the fuck is that? I'm so confused. I don't you know, know he draws that on every morning. It's definitely um, changed a bit. I still can't tell the difference. I feel like they both have escalated with the tattoos and their hair. And I think it's the other one actually that posts some stuff with contacts or maybe it's a filter is the creepiest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> After that, though, he shows himself getting a leg tattoo, supposedly of her face. Oh, period. Well. Oh, no. It says, tatting Kayla's face on my leg. I had to do it. And it's him just, like, lip syncing to a song. But he doesn't show the tattoo. He just is, like, showing that he's getting a tattoo. Then he posts the next day. Because if Fly doesn't get her face, that means that Fly does not love her like she loves him. To be honest with you, I was lying when I said I got her face on my leg. <laughs> Got 1.5 million views, to be honest with you, but um, should I get her on my leg? I still have space and stuff like that, but um. When did you just gulp so deep? <laughs> I didn't gulp so deep, I thought something was touching me, but but should I get it or, or, or what? You feel me? Cause like, that isn't, I don't think a tattoo means that you love someone, you don't love someone. Show, show them my tattoo real quick. No. Come on. No. Oh, you're fake. He got the piano keys special with his veneers. Why does that happen so often? Both of them, like, it's insane. I told you, they look like chiclets. Well, that's the thing. How are there so many dentists? And it's really not to come for his appearance. Like, it's just like, why do so many fucking dentists do the same work with veneers where they just make it look square and like blinding white? Like all of them should be like, hey, maybe we tone down the white a little bit. Like if someone wants white, you still have to make it a little bit yellow. Like they can't look like fucking, I don't know. That's the thing though. It's like, these feel like choices that they're making. <laughs> yeah, but why are the dentists following through with it? Dentists should be advising against this. Like, I don't know. I think it's like unethical to give people piano key teeth. So then someone points out that, cause he just said in that last one, like, oh, I don't think it means like that you don't love the person if you don't get a tattoo of them. Well, people right. are thinking that this situation where she got the tattoo was probably him being like, you don't even love me unless you do this. And that's why she did it because they do have a very toxic relationship. And he addresses that. People think that you got the face, my face tatted on your face because it was more like, if you love me, you tap my face on your face situation. You did tell me you tricked me. <clears throat> but I didn't say what that person said though. No, you didn't say if, I, if you love me, you did. Yeah. Yeah. You actually came up with the idea. So she chimes in and says, well, you did tell me that you'd treat me better. Oh my God, what? Yeah, and you would wish that this was a skit, but I really don't think it is. Like I have seen clips of them from a live stream where she is throwing things, breaking glass, um, just a really, really, really tumultuous relationship. So it's like, this is not a skit. They're just both really young. I don't know how young he is, but she seems so young and troubled, I think so. And they're just, uh, I don't know what they're doing, but it scares me. Okay, so they're both 22. We just looked it up and that is very young. That is very young to have that much money, to have that like status in life, I guess. How and, do they um, have the money? I'm so confused. Again, I think it's live streaming. Didn't they have an OnlyFans? That's why they were kissing yeah but did other? people like actually subscribe to it oh i bet oh i fucking bet yeah i mean didn't you see all the replies on twitter that people were super into that because yeah it's disturbing but like here's the thing though is like nothing is irreversible she could just get it removed she could cover it up with makeup foundations are full coverage nowadays girly like you you know it's not the end of the world i mean already you can see that she covers it a lot with her hair and it's like at least off to the side it almost completely because like, it's not if you're just listening 
it is not super, super dark like a lot of the other tattoos that we've seen. This is like more of like a light silhouette. Like it is there, but it's not like this big portrait. Here's one where someone commented and said, that's sad, you can already tell she regrets it. That's sad, you can already tell she regrets it. Baby, did you get a tattoo on your face and you regret it already? Um, at first I was letting the hate get to me a little bit, but then I realized that everything's okay. Oh no. You're supposed to get a tattoo and not regret it ever. Well, your actions may be, but that's it. And then I got over it. But. That doesn't make sense because before a tattoo, don't you have to think, even if I act a certain way, like, right? Yeah, but I didn't expect you to do that. Wow. Hmm. It's very clear that she thinks that, like, this tattoo was going to somehow change how toxic their relationship was. And it's very clear that that has not been the case. Yeah, I'm just dying at the fact that they literally just do one take and whatever happens, happens. They're going to post it. Like, they do not think these through. But, yeah, no, that is absolutely evident. And I don't think it's fake. Again, I don't think this is a skit. I think she's literally saying... I thought that you would like me more yeah. and you don't and that annoyed me, but we're still together and I don't know. It's, it is sad, but they're young. They'll figure it out. I hope that the toxicity in the relationship doesn't get to the point that it's really bad. Uh, I think it is really bad, but you know what I mean? Like, I hope they just like end things. She gets the tattoo taken off and they grow up and live happily ever after. And he gets to make out with his brother in peace. And the <laughs> other brother though, he has a kid. What? See, that's scary. What yeah, the he has fuck? a daughter. This is a clip of, I believe, the other one. I can't tell the difference. Maybe it's the same one and it's a different ex. <laughs> but um, she has a neck tattoo. And this live is from uh, December. But it's them talking and she like breaks down because she got the neck tattoo because he convinced her to, I guess. And now she's like really regretting it and like can't okay. afford to get it removed. I did it. Bro, the fact he feels so cool. That's not even funny for real, Alex, because it's really not funny, bro. I really live with it, bro. Like, for real. Like, I wake up every day and I don't feel good about myself. And I used to wake up and feel really good about myself. It's not funny at all. Did you even, like, all the times you made fun of me on the internet, did you ever once offer to even get it removed? Did you ever ask if I wanted this on my face? You don't sit here and laugh about it, huh? Like, it's so funny. It's not funny. You know what it did. I can't go back to my contract because of this. You know exactly what's up with this stuff. It's not cool. Who, why would I ever want this on my neck or my face, ever? Be honest. Y'all can sit here and think it's funny all you want to because it's a bunch of people on TikTok, which is a bunch of children, and that's why people like him continue. Because I actually have a baby daddy on here that has way more followers than him that is so brainwashed into TikTok Live that they act like him where nothing means anything to anyone. Because why would you laugh about that? That's not funny. You know it's not funny. That's where we'll end it. But um, God, can you imagine ever trying to have a conversation with those men? No, they're just That's like, why I'm like air how are they just getting floating girlfriends through their ears. to begin with? Money. And it's not to say anything about these women. I think that just otherwise, what what is it? <laughs> if I don't it's know, not yeah, money. Because like, like, once they get these women, then they're like girls. Honestly, they're like still very young. They're emotionally manipulating the fuck out of them. But yeah, so apparently he has a pattern of making his exes get tattoos on their faces and yeah. necks, which is weird. And then the other one does have a kid. And I saw a clip the, with the mom of the kid on live and she's like crying and basically yelling at him because he's not in the kid's life. And she's like, she's talking so much now. Like you never even see her. And oh my gosh, it's all just like, oh my God. What is happening? Anyway, that's um pretty much all I have. Oh, wait. And then we'll do a quick update on their uh, OnlyFans situation. No. No, it's, that's okay. It's nothing graphic. And it's not no just worries. them. <laughs> it's, I was very confused. So it's 2.9 million views. Hey, my man. Can't play the music. <sighs> oh, but it's that sound that goes, and my man. Thank you to my man. That's and the it's song. the brother, but then it's also another guy who I don't know who it is. Someone named Hakeem. So they're doing threesomes with each other and other men. I mean, again, like how much of it is trolling and how much is, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't, like I know they troll, but at the same time I've also seen them uh, tongue kiss. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. They're weird and they scare me. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have to report for the Island Boys. Um, We need our- Okay, that's like, not our worst Island Boy topic. No, so no, I, I forgive I knew you for bringing that. I it wouldn't be like, you wouldn't just like leave the chat, but like <laughs> I didn't want to tell you ahead of time in case you were 
not into it. Well, um, I do have a We Love the Internet today that I just saw. It's a little, not long, but it's like not just one video. It's like two little videos and it's a, more of a situation that happened online, but not long enough to be a topic whatsoever. So this is what I saw on my For You page. I'm going to show you it in the order that I saw it. Garlic is not only going to add a ton of flavor, but it also adds a ton of volume and fiber to help keep you. 400 degrees for 40 fucking minutes, huh, buddy? <laughs> Fix the fucking video, man. You owe me eight fucking dollars. This thing came out like burnt little fucking crispy. That's what I saw first. I was just like, wait, what? And then I realized the original guy, he goes by the name of Stealth Health Life. And his whole thing is sharing recipes, which like slay away. I mean, the food that he makes looks delicious. But when I thought about it, as someone that cooks on the regular, 400 degrees at 40 minutes will fuck up and like burn to a crisp any vegetable you put on there. So he doubled down, which is the funniest part. And he commented because once the guy posted this, that went viral and people were like cracking up and commenting on that guy's thing being like, oh yeah, $400 at 14 minutes, cash app this man his $8 right now. Like they were just like, you know, it's not like malicious. I mean, I'm not following recipes, but like if I were, that would happen to me because I wouldn't think twice I'd be like oh that's what they told me okay so that's literally what he's saying right now uh because people were kind of saying like You're you know stupid. you could have just like that? checked on it yeah, yeah. but uh he's like no that's what I a fucking recipe's <laughs> for okay so stealth health life commented on his post because people were coming and commenting to him and he says if you cover the entirety of the sheet pan with the same volume of peppers slash onions I used that's just how long it takes because there's a ton of moisture obviously adjust if you use less now when I looked okay he did not say to put oil on the pan at all. Like the ingredients do not include oil and it's just like put peppers and onions on the entire sheet pan, which even if you did that, peppers and onions don't have that much moisture that they wouldn't stick and get super fucking burnt. And when you see them in his recipe, sorry, I'm very passionate about cooking. When you see them in his recipe, the peppers are still like red and vibrant. They don't even look roasted. So it's like, what? is happening here. This is like a fucking donut gate moment where you're selling us something that's not true. But also that he's like, it's almost like he's trolling people to have them. It feels the like it, but he's also trying to be like, oh, I have like healthy, awesome, delicious recipes. And it's just annoying. So this guy um, responded to that comment, which he's very funny. He does not post on TikTok. I wish he did because he's funny. Would you look at this shit, man? I get home. I see this fucking video going off. I go back. I say, hey, maybe the dude owned up to his fucking mistake. He's going to send me my fucking $8 on the cash app. He's going to make it right. Nope. I go in the fucking comment. He says, if you cover the entirety of the fucking cheap pan with the same volume of the pepper and onion or blah, 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 blah. No, you didn't say none of that shit in your fucking video, man. Don't be backpedaling now, buddy. Stealth health fucking scam artist should be your new name. And I want to address some of these other comments. He wrote comments down here. notes. We got didn't think to check. Yep, there's a reason I'm using that fucking cookbook video, motherfucker. I have no idea what I'm doing. Not enough veggies. Tell that to my fucking wallet, man. I bought three of the fucking bell pepper. I had to watch YouTube videos to cut them. Four of the fucking poblano, whatever them fucking things are. I had even more jalapeno than that. This tray was fucking filled, man. They shriveled to fucking dust. I don't even want to look at this fucking pan anymore, man. I'm going to throw that fucking shit out like I did. Uh, and anyway, honestly, it made me laugh a lot because I have followed so many shitty recipes, particularly from when I was vegan. I don't know why so many recipes were asked. And I will never forget this red pepper pasta that I made. That was so foul and disgusting that I just threw everything away and I had a horrible night. And like people... I understand have different like taste buds, mm -hmm. but like sometimes you're just knowingly putting out bullshit, bitch. Like I followed it to a T and it tasted like hot pepper soup, like not in a good way. Like it tastes like hot pepper dishwater. I'll say that's mm -hmm. more accurate. It's just so frustrating when you buy all the ingredients, you get ready and it's ass. Like it's not because you did something wrong or used the wrong ingredient. It's just disgusting. Yeah, usually for me, it's that I did something wrong. <laughs> well, you, do you know uh, Fully Raw Christina on YouTube? What do you think? Well, I used to follow a bunch like of fully raw vegans. Suggested. I know. I know. I don't know why I asked that. But I used to follow a bunch of like raw vegans. I was never raw vegan, but I followed like Freely the Banana Girl and Fully Raw Christina. What and they promote a very, very scary lifestyle of eating all raw. And they like demonize cooked foods that it like cooks all the nutrients out of it. Even if it's cooking like vegetables? Oh, yeah. No, no, they don't believe in that. Everything is raw. You cannot cook it because all the nutrients leave it, very which is bullshit because there's a lot of like methods of cooking that actually enhance 
enhance the way your body metabolizes or like absorbs nutrients. So it's just very weird. But anyway, she's going viral on TikTok right now because people are making fun of her because literally all she did was try to like match colors and shapes. Like she would be like, I'm making fettuccine Alfredo, but the sauce was just like blended up cauliflower and it was like spiralized zucchini. It's like, yeah, well, that's the color of fettuccine Alfredo, but so I don't know, she, girl. She's just trying to make it look like it, but not actually taste even remotely or be the same thing. Yeah, and then she says, like, for a cheese-like thing on top, you could, like, pulse some cauliflower and get a Parmesan cheese. Of, it's like, that's not how tastes work just because it looks like it. So yeah, I have followed many recipes from people like that. And it's just like, you have some audacity because the price of groceries and shit, you know people are gonna go out and make it. And 400 degrees at 40 minutes, there is no oven in the world. Maybe his oven, I'll give him that. Maybe his oven is just really not powerful. But my oven would burn that shit to a crisp. Honestly though, that's one of the reasons I feel like I don't cook is because I am worried that I'll just screw it up and then I will have wasted my money on all the ingredients. Yeah, no, it's it's a very valid fear. I feel like following recipes is a, it's kind of hit or miss. Wait, but there's no resolution here? No, he didn't cash up him $8 and he literally just kept on posting his recipes. He don't give a flying fuck, girly. Guys, we have a breaking news update. Guess who has restored world order, according to him? Uh, Stealth Health Life has indeed paid Chad $24, which is actually three times what uh, Chad had originally asked for. So apparently the onslaught of comments from everyone demanding justice for Chad uh, really came through. So uh, he cash upped him $24 and said, for your pain and suffering and to run it back. Maybe next episode we'll have an update on whether Chad was able to cook the vegetables or not. Anyway. That's it. Bye. Um, do you have one or <clears throat> was mine long enough for the both of us? No, we could just leave it at that for today. But I do want to make one more. Um, I should have brought this up earlier when we were talking about the comments in the beginning. Uh, someone was like, they never research anything. I was like, well, what did we not research this time? Well, apparently the Ariana Grande interview we talked about <laughs> was Zach saying they talk about how it's in New York. So I've never been there. <laughs> oh. But in my defense, I showed the pictures. It did look very, very similar. That's such a silly thing to say we don't research over. That's more that you were just mistaken that, yeah, yeah the location of where it was did not change anything about the story. I thought you were going to say like, oh, Ariana Grande just said like, just kidding at the end. Yeah, I was like, it was a pretty generic looking warehouse. So maybe I was a little overzealous. It was my Sofia Culpa moment. So I've never been there. But um, Interesting. I thought I had. I was very confident about it. I spent even like way too long looking because don't worry, that entire AccuView campaign has been like mostly scrubbed from the internet for some reason. Yeah. And um, I found the screenshots anyway because I was that confident. But oh my God. well, sorry about the misinformation, girlies. We'll try better next episode. Anyway, that is where we will leave you. Uh, if you made it to the end, as always, we appreciate you. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. And yeah, as always, we'll see you on Monday. Bye. Cheers. Bye.